Hello! Express LRS just keeps innovating and innovating. You take your eye off them for just a few seconds and something new comes along. And that's the subject of what I want to talk about today, coming in the form of this new module from Radio Master called the Nomad, which they've printed black embossed on black case, so you probably can't see what it looks like. So in order to understand what's cool about this, I want to look at how ELRS hardware has looked up to now. And don't worry, this is not a very technical insight because I don't know enough about hardware electronics to give that to you. ELRS has taken advantage of the LoRa protocol and the chipsets from Semtech, specifically the SX127X and the SX128X families. Now, if we go ahead and pop this 2.4 RX under the microscope, we'll see we have an SX1280 chip, and this specifically communicates on the 2.4 gigahertz bands. Similarly, if we put this uh, 868 or 915 megahertz RX under the scope, we can see the SX1276 chip, which can communicate in the range of 137 to 1020 megahertz. So what the new Nomad module has, as well as the accompanying range of receivers, is the new Semtech LR1121 chip. This can communicate in a very wide range of frequencies from 150 megahertz to 960 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz and 2.1 gigahertz. Don't know what 2.1 gigahertz is used for, but they mention it in the spec sheet. So we already have one module to unite them all, but that's just the start of the story. Let's talk about this module. I'm not gonna unbox it or anything because what you get in there is essentially the module and these two antennas. The final production model will also include a adapter so you can plug this into a nano bay. This is obviously the JR version at the moment, um, but that wasn't available at the time the review sample was sent. Now these two antennas are significant because this module has dual one watt transceivers in it. So what's that mean? Well, you can talk with your existing ELRS receivers in either 2.4, or 868 or 915, so I did just that. Making sure it would talk to this quad, which is an 868. This is in fact an old uh, R9 receiver that we transferred over. And this little whoop, which has a tiny little 2.4 ELRS receiver. Well, it could definitely be easier to read because it sort of goes off the screen there, but I am in the ELRS Lua application. And if I scroll down, you see we've got the 2.4 modes there. And as I go up, it goes to, it's basically saying low band. So if I go to 100 hertz low band like that, and here I've got that quad plugged into Betaflight, and you can see there that's all connected fine. And what I've now done is put on 500 hertz 2.4. I've got this little guy plugged in, and once again, all connected, easy peasy. But because this module has the twin transceivers, it means you can run it in Gemini mode as well as switched antenna mode, or in fact, you can just run it on one or either of the antennas if you really want to. And if you want to know more about what Gemini mode is, I've got a video where I tested one out up here. But it wasn't enough just to have two ways of doing Gemini and doing either frequency. The Express LRS developers came up with the idea of using both bands at once. And they are calling this Gemini crossband. In the current full release, which is ELRS 3.4, there are a few new modes available. You have a speed boost mode, which gets 250 hertz out of um, the sub one gigahertz frequency, so 868 or 915, and a 200 hertz mode that's specifically optimized for Mavlink. They've done some really interesting Mavlink things where they're sending all the control link information and all the Mavlink data, and then you can hook up back to Mission Planner. I'm not gonna go into that in this video. And then you've got the dual band stuff at 100 hertz and 150 hertz mode, where the 100 hertz modes give you full resolution of 16 channels. Not exactly sure what the resolution is if you get 150. I presume it's full resolution on a certain amount of channels and then the rest are like for switches and stuff, which is still got quite a range, but not as much. So with dual band, you're getting simultaneously transmission and receiving on both the 868915 band and the 2.4 uh, gigahertz band. So the idea here is it's the most stable link you can have under the more extreme conditions. So if you've got somewhere where your 2.4 connection is bad, then the 868 or 915 will get in there. Uh, similarly, if something's blocked on the other frequency, then your other one can get through. And it's zapping a lot of packets down there. You've got multiple chances to get the same control packet on multiple bands, and that is pretty cool. If that wasn't enough, uh, ELRS 3.5, which is where it really comes in, um, has a lot more enhancements. Now, 3.5 is at release candidate one at the moment, so it's not quite out there, but it's 
pretty close to release. Uh, several new modes there, uh, and these are called the K modes. So you've got DK500 and K1000. So here's a little write-up on each of the K modes, and I must admit I knew nothing about the different modulations. I thought everything was LoRa, but the K modes use FSK, which means frequency shift keying modulation. One of the main characteristics of this is anti-noise and anti-attenuation, and we see that it has built-in packet repair. I've no idea how this works, but obviously it sounds very clever, and it's a D mode, and that means it's deja vu diversity. Again, this means you have multiple repeating packets, which should keep your link solid in really challenging environments. The K1000 is an 868 or 915 protocol where it somehow runs at 1000 hertz. As Tech mentioned, it was developed for the extra throughput needed when you are using your link for the Mavlink telemetry coming from a model running something like ArduPilot but it's still capable of pretty long range. These different types of modulation means that not all modes that were available on the old SX128X or the SX127X families are available on the LR1121 stuff, so here's a handy chart. The original high speed stuff on 2.4 used LFRC modulation, which means fast long range communication. And the modes that use that modulation aren't available on this new hardware, so there's a few of the modes missing. There's also a few of the modes missing from the lower band support. It might be a simplistic view, but it's my understanding that LoRa modulation has the best overall range. You'll notice that this chart also mentions the 433 MHz frequency, which was very popular for long range some years ago. There's nothing in the firmware as yet to support this, although I know that people have been building things and testing, so perhaps this will come out at some point. In theory, it should be a case of keeping your same module and receivers, but changing the firmware and the antennas. Now, to make use of these extra special dual band modes, obviously you'll need a dual band receiver. Radio Master have brought out this one, and it's called the DBR4. And if we have a look at it in more detail, as you might expect, it has two of the LR1121 chips and four antennas. So you've got uh, two 2.4 antennas and two 868 or 915 antennas, which is quite a lot of antennas. <laughs> and it looks a bit like a drunken starfish if you get all the antennas out. But hey, we're mostly flying quads with four legs, so hopefully we should be able to figure out where they, they can all go. You'll also notice that it has uh, 20 by 20 mil mounting holes, which should go nicely on a stack and in the bag, You've also got some additional little rubber grommets to get in there so you can get it nicely mounted. Now, unfortunately, bad timing and weather prevents me from getting this installed and getting it flying on something at the moment. In fact, I was due to go out today because when I checked the weather earlier in the week, it was like, it's all great. And then today's forecast is pfft. So I ended up not charging anything. As it is, it wasn't actually raining this morning and I could have got something in, but I didn't manage to. So I actually have five models uh, that are sort of sat over there ready just to do the flying test. I've done anything else for them, but I was just waiting for that weather window. And now because of other circumstances, it's going to be at least a week before I can get them out to the field and, and go and fly them, weather permitting. So I'll be flying this when I do go out because I've got pretty much, yeah, everything is on Express LRS anyway. And at the very least, instead of taking my Bandit module, which is on 868 or 915, um, I can take out the Nomad module, at least put it through its paces that way. As far as the receiver goes, which looks like a really scary spider now, I'm gonna wait for ExpressLRS to actually release the 3.5 version, and then I can check out all those new modes without worrying that I might have hit a bug that they haven't noticed. So that'll be coming along soon, but certainly uh, the fact I can use Gemini on either 2.4 or 868 as I fly is pretty interesting. Um, I'm also interested to see how these antennas work. I presume they're dual band antennas, so it'd be very easy to check those against specific like uh, 868 or 2.4 antennas because I can just swap some over and see what happens. So that'll be coming up soon. In the meantime, if you want to check this module out and the scary receiver with all the legs, um, then there are obviously some links down to Radio Master's site where you can check it out in more detail. In the meantime, I hope that's been a helpful preview. and uh, I'll be out flying this as soon as possible and hopefully get this thing installed soon. I hope that was helpful and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.